Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Meme or Dream, the series where we take decks that Wizards publishes over on Magic.gg, saying they got six wins in a row or more at Platinum Rank of Better in Best of Three, and we put them to the test. We try to find out if they're a dream and actually somehow can live up to their record, or are they a meme and as janky as they look on paper, and honestly, it's been a while since we've had a meme or dream episode. That's because Wizards has stopped publishing as many janky decks. In the past, there were some real head scratchers. Like, how in the world did this deck possibly win a game, let alone six games in a row in best of three? But most of the lists over the last few months have been pretty reasonable, like actual top tier decks for the most part, where you could easily see it going on a six game win streak. But that all changed this week when Wizards published this deck and i don't even know what to call this deck i'm calling it dinos and battles because it literally has like at least one copy of pretty much every dinosaur that is legal and standard and it has pretty much every battle that is in the gruel colors as well so it is an unruly pile of cards so obviously Every dino is already pretty interesting and unique. It's a lot of cards you don't normally see, like Tyrannix Atrocity or Rampaging Geoderb. Those are cards that don't usually show up in Standard. And then it's got the weird battles as well. Like we haven't really seen Invasion of Chandelar take off. We haven't seen Invasion of Crosses do a lot of work in Standard. So there's a lot of weirdness going on with this deck. It gets even weirder though. If you actually break down this deck list, look at just this curve. Like we have almost nothing that costs three or less mana. And then look at this pile of stuff that costs six or more mana. I think we have more six plus drops than we do have three or less drops in the deck, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then the deck is also playing 21 lands. 21 lands, I guess, in defense of the deck. There are two bushwhacks, which maybe count as like half a land since you can get a basic land with them. But really like 21, 22 lands, a huge pile of six drops. And then of course, in classic meme or dream fashion, we almost got a full sideboard. The full sideboard, eh, it's got some weird choices. Like, I don't know why you'd play a full place at a foreboding statue in the sideboard. It seems like if you want the ramp, you'd want it in the main deck, but we got close. We got up to 13 cards, which is honestly a lot better than most meme or dream decks. Some meme or dream decks like zero cards in the sideboard. But anyway, the deck is so ridiculous that we just had to take it out for a spin and find out if it's a meme or dream. So let's jump into some games and see if 21 land dynamic in battles with a 13 card sideboard actually had a chance to go 6 and 0 in best of three standard at Platinum Ranker better. Before we do, a quick reminder if you need some dinos or some battles, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Anyway, let's do some dinos and battling. I think my biggest concern for this deck is definitely the curve. The curve is, oh boy, 21 lands. Even with the bushwhacks, 21 lands in so many five and six and seven drops is super scary. Like I could imagine just like casting a bunch of dinos actually, actually potentially winning game. Oh, how does this work? Green Sun Twilight, reveal the top X plus one cards of your library, choose a creature and or land card from among them. That's fine. So we have two lands in hand. Hopefully this gets land number three. Okay, okay. I mean, if we can get to Invasion of Zendikar, then our mana should be fine. I mean, maybe there's enough ramp in this deck that the that the curve can work. And if you make the curve work, I guess the upside is we're going to have we're going to have a uh, ridiculous top end in solid action if we actually do hit our land drops. Ooh, Racer's Ring. Well, I mean, in that case, we'll just play Racer's Ring. Next turn, we can Invasion of Zendikar. And then maybe we can cast, a, wow. Ultra Tron assembled for our opponent. Opponent just went one of each, one of each basic. One of each basic, there's our friend Bushwag. All right, invasion of Zendikar. We will also do a little ramping. Although I, I'm afraid our opponent's ramping into Atroxus and we're ramping into Tyrannus, Tyrannix atrocities. Or Italius. Italius, oh god, we have hits in our deck too. Oh, this is gonna be bad. What uh, what do we get? Opponent gets our one of Ren and a Riveteer's Charm to I guess. Oh, they're not even gonna cast it. Okay, well I guess that could have went worse. The Ren is a problem, but I mean the bigger problem Oh goodness, that's also oh wow, weird. Whoo, yeah, 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 Titan Industry. That's uh that's a good one. Well, invasion, I don't know how, oh, they got another Itali. I don't know how we get out of this. Grab a land, grab a land. Uh, bushwhack, grab a land, play the land, play with fire. 
a Ren and Realm Breaker. I mean, I guess next turn we can try to cast a huge Green Sun's Twilight. Although our opponent's just gonna spin a tally again and they can flip this invasion if they want. Oh God, top area stomper. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, did our opponent give up their chance to play a tally? I think they did. All right, just gonna hit our face. Sure. Another atrocity. If X is five or more, instead of put the chosen cards on the battlefield or in your hand. So four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. I mean, this is what we got. Hopefully it's good. Boom. Our own Itali. See if we can win the Itali Wars and a Rockfall Veil. Battlefield. Spin it to win it. Come on. Something good, something good. Something good. Topiary Stomper and Invasion of Chandelar. Well, I guess we have a Ren, but mostly an empty graveyard. Okay, we get back a Ren. Do we even survive this turn, though, is the question. I don't know that we do. What if they just flip a tally? Big score. Discards, oh god. What if they have a Cityscape Leveler? <laughs> mm-hmm. Opponent unearths Cityscape Leveler. Attacks with everything. Are we literally dead? Trample, trample. Yeah, we're literally dead, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> hmm, our opponent's Italies and Cityscape Levelers beat our Tyrannic's Atrocities. Who would have guessed? Uh, well, we have a Cityscape Leveler. We also have, what does this do? Gain control of target creature, untap it, gain taste. I mean, I guess we take that. Lightning Strike Strangles, what? Wait, why are we playing a sword? Is it to flashback play with fire? Is it just for protection? Oh my God. Well, I will say the protection colors on Sword of Forge and, uh, Forge and Frontier are relevant. Curse of Shaken Faith, I don't think that really does anything. Invasion of Crosses, I don't think kills anything. Somehow we made the curve even higher. Is this actually a good card? And a man of any color. Put an omen counter on it. If there's three or more counters, it flips into a 5-5. Five, five. Let's let's just run it like that. The ram spell on the sideboard is super awkward. Well, unfortunately, our opponent might just be doing bigger things in our deck. Our deck has a lot of big things, but somehow our opponents might just be better. All right, we'll keep this. I mean... Rampaging Geoderm, gonna flip, gonna flip us some battles. Gonna flip us some battles. Invasion of Urgamon. Really need to hit a land here. I guess we discard an Italian, unfortunately. Okay, into an eight drop. Oh boy. Oh boy, we need a land for battle. Oh, rugged Highlands. Punished by the budget duel. Actually, we gain a life though, so we're winning. So maybe we weren't punished. Maybe, maybe we're winning. Opponent, Topiary Stompa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, called our Poison Forest and Invasion of Zendikar. Grab a couple of lands. What do you got? Boy, opponent's hitting all their basics again. Opponent, Invasion of Zendikar, gonna flip it. It's funny that we're a dinosaur deck and we only have one top Yuri Stomper, which is definitely the best early game. Definitely the best early game uh, dinosaur and one of the best dinosaurs. Tyrannic's Atrocity is not impressive in this matchup. I mean, I guess we just, oh, they're gonna counter this, aren't they? Well, I mean, what else are we gonna do? Itali. Okay, resolves. Spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Topiary Stomper, and okay, another Itali. We will accept Itali number two. Keep an Itali. Spin it to win it. Invasion of Urgamon. Topiary Stomper. I mean, that was a, that was a pretty good turn. Resolving a tally, actually, kind of powerful. Huh, let's discard Cityscape Leveler for unearthing purposes. Get another Stomper. Okay, well, maybe maybe we're seeing the way the deck could win, which is hit your land drops and get to a tally and just hope for the best. I think a tally's good enough that it can make a lot of janky decks win if you spin well. See if our opponent can a tally us back and spin even better. Riveteer's Charm to kill our Itali. I mean, we're gonna kill both of these and try to set up a tyrannic, Tyrannic's Atrocity opponent. Are they gonna spend two burn spells on this? All right, opponent is going to spend two burn spells on it. All right, so we, oh, we could flip. Wow, greens, we gotta go green sun, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, two, you know, let's go like seven. Green sun's Twilight. Tyrannix Rex, Racer's Ring, Battlefield. Yeah, I guess we're going face. I think we're actually trying to toxic our opponent, opponent out of this game. Wait, are we gonna win with Tyrannix Atrocity? Oh God, what? Puts a tally into play. 
touch the spirit realm. Okay. To hit our treasure, sure. This does hurt. Opponent scribes to the bottom. We drop to five. Wait, does this work? Involuntary employment. Steal Awaken Skyclave. Oh, bonus gives. Oh, I guess we didn't even need the toxic. They were just gonna die to normal damage. That was actually kind of dinosaur-y. Like the dinosaur plan kind of worked. It is awkward that we're up against an Itali deck because we have a lot of stuff that's good for our opponent to spin into. Maybe we do try foreboding statues. I mean, they are a ramp spell. What would we cut is the question to bring them in. Maybe we went on like one Chandelar, a Cinder Maw, a Renin Realm Breaker. What does this do? Blow up an artifact or enchantment, haste. Okay, we'll go down the sail bag. Let's try it like, let's try it like that. Same plan, a bit more ramp. I mean, Tyrannus Rex came through. We're kind of like Tyrannosaurus Tribal, honestly. About as close as you can get to being Tyrannosaurus Tribal in standard. Well, okay. Ergamons for days. Ergamons for days. Bona tap land. Well, tap land go. Topiary Stomper is actually pretty good. Opponent. Tap land. Well, land and invasion of Ergamon. Discard a play with fire. Do not draw land. Opponent. Topiary Stomper. Uh huh. So it'd be a good turn to draw land. This would be a good turn to draw land. No, another foreboding statue. Well, invasion of Ergamon. Discard a cityscape leveler. Can we please draw land? Please, please. Okay, we do draw the land, so play the land. Invasion of Ergamon. Discard for boating statue. I mean, we are we are battling. I will give our deck that. Hopefully they don't have invasion of Zendikar. That's the nightmare. Oh, they do. This interaction is probably what our deck should be built around, I think, is like Four Stompers, four Invasion of Zendikars, because this is, I think, the best way to ramp in Standard. Like, Stomper ramps you into Zendikar, flips the Zendikar, and you just have so much mana. I think that's... I think that's something that our deck is lacking that is is going to make it less good than it could be. Well, our opponent has all the mana in the world and a Titan of Industry. Hilariously, blowing up a treasure here really hurts us. <laughs> Short of casting an Italy unless we draw land. Well, okay, Vorinclax. Forest, forest. Play the land. Oh, that Titan of Industry. Yeah, our opponent just ramped better than we did this game. We will kill the Skyclave. Invasion of Tolvada, but nothing to reanimate. Pop it. Wait, can we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do we flip Vorinclax? Is that our best pathway to victory? Is that how we can win this game? Wait, what if we cast this? Double the power, does this have trample? It does. So this would hit for 12. We still gotta deal with the Titan of Industry. So if we flip this, we mill 10 and then get to reanimate two. I mean, the other option is not to flip it and just play a tally, which is, I guess that's, that's probably correct, unfortunately. All right, play a tally. See if we can hit something good. Oh wait, Bushwhack is kind of good. So Bushwhack, a tally, Topiary Stomper, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Attack Ergamon, attack Ergamon. Opponent's gonna block. Okay, we get to flip. Taruga. Uh, we'll discard a Foreboding Statue. Invasion of Ikoria. Hold, hold, hold a tally. Please don't die. We need a tally to be able to block this Titan. Big score to draw some cards. We actually have a chance here somehow. Opponent goes attacking. Well, I mean, a tally is gonna block. Actually, I think we have to block with everything. Well, not everything. The problem is if we block with just a tally and they Volcanic Sprite, then we lose to the trample damage. So I think we gotta block like this. All right, Titan of Industry down. Wait, are we gonna win this somehow? Is that actually a thing that could happen? Oh my goodness! That did involve an Itali. We're also Vorinclexing and zapondra -ing and just like promoting ruins. We got a lot of jank in our deck. Uh, our opponent's playing like 
the most efficient ramp package and doing like doing it the the right way quote unquote and our pile of jank actually actually got there okay well score one for the dream category wait watch this deck be good oh my that would be hilarious watch us actually just reel off six wins in a row after mocking this deck with a 13 card sideboard and the most expensive curve of all time can the dinos and the battles keep the good times rolling no we are going to mulligan okay well this will keep we're gonna put a land if we just don't draw land in our first like four turns then i guess fair enough oh boy all right there's a land looks like our opponent's uh perhaps a little aggro i think part of what happened last game which helped is our opponent was also playing Ooh, omen hawker our opponent was also playing a lot of expensive stuff so we had time to set up let's see let's see what we can do against a deck that is playing one drops and two drops Wow, blast zones for days. I mean, our opponent's on a brew for sure. Activates Omen Hawker. Okay. Covert Tactician to put it back into play. That's a that's a combo. Okay, turn four, we get to start playing magic cards, sort of. Come on, tell us you don't have another artifact to put into play. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. Activates Bank Buster. Well, I've never seen Covert Tactician go off, but it is going off today. Yeah, I guess we just played Geoderm. Wait, are they? Oh my God, they're a counter spell. Oh my goodness. Oh, this, okay. No real blue mana, no problem for our opponent. The opponent draws with Bank, but wow. There's the blue mana. And more Omen Hawkers. And opponent gonna go attacking. I mean, we have literally nothing left in hand. Well, we were worried about not hitting lands. That appears to not be an issue. Oh no, is this just like counterspell tribal? Oh geez. I think we're pretty dead. <laughs> I think this game we are literally not going to resolve a spell and we're gonna lose to Covert Tactician. <laughs> opponent ultimates the bank buster. Well, I will say our opponent has a, wow. I think our opponents probably run pretty well, but this is a interesting idea idea for a deck that I've never seen anyone do. Invasion of Chandelar. Are we literally dead? One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we are literally dead, right? Land. Invasion of Zendikar. We can pay for your make disappear. Well, let's see if our opponent knows how to crew a vehicle. The one thing that stands between them and winning this game. Do they know how to crew a Reckoner Bank Buster? Well, that was interesting. Copies tactician well i guess they don't even need to crew a bank buster all right and they they do know opponent does know how to crew a vehicle well that was interesting interesting well we're gonna bring in anything that looks like cheap removal price probably city on fire city on fire does not line up well with the deck that is playing uh playing all the counter spells in the world not not the best matchup for that one same with like invasion of chandelar we don't really get cards in the graveyard that much so far curse of shaken faith let me know in the comments what matchup what matchup would someone put this card in their deck for i could see it if you're playing burn and just trying to like be as aggro as possible but our deck is definitely not that in a deck like this what what possible reason would someone have to put curse of shaken faith in their deck because i i don't really see it i don't really see it run it like that well we got to see the problem with the slowness of our deck that game where there is a drawback to having your curve start at five i mean that's a that's a little over the top we do have some cheaper cards but considering our deck in our mana base i think we keep this we literally cannot cast a spell but we have things to do early if we can find a red source and we do have the invasion of zendikar opponent omen hawker red mana okay five drop this is a hand that i think could actually win this aggro matchup if we hit mana this was our fear coming true opponent Mycosynth gardens goes attacking hits us passes well we draw red mana but it is pretty tapped opponent how many counters do you think our opponent has in hand one two three five probably five they're gonna cast something here Surge Engine passes. Grandson's Twilight X1. Just to see if we can hit a land since we are so not good at hitting lands. Okay, we hit a mountain. That's that's something. That is a land. Play the land. So our opponent can start leveling this up, which is an issue. Well, um, oh, they probably have counters too, don't they? Well, let's invasion of Ergamon. Opponent going to level up their surge engine. And level up their surge engine. 
Well, we're gonna discard Invasion of Crosses, which doesn't seem very helpful here. And then we will play with Fire the Omen Hawker, I guess. Okay, I mean, I don't know how we beat a Surge Engine, but we did kill an Omen Hawker. That's a, that's a step in the right direction. Pona gets in for five. Opponent passes. Uh, how do we resolve anything? Well, Invasion of Ergamon. Discard Geoderm. Invasion of Zendikar. Come on, we know you got five counters. Let's let's see one of them. All right, opponent. Opponent. Passes. Well, Bushwhack for a land. Counterspell Tribal not going to go well for this deck. Not even a little. Invasion of Chandelar. I mean, we're literally just dead here if our opponent Surge Engines. I don't know if they will. They might not see the line, but they, they do literally just have lethal with Mycosynth. Okay, they I think they do see the line. Well, we get to get back three cards. Full value. Draw three for five. But then we die. Literally all they have to do is activate Mycosynth Gardens here. All right, opponent has figured it out. Well, okay. Score one for the, our first match went so well that I was starting to feel like, wow, maybe this deck is actually good. Match two though, that was more of what I was, uh, what I was afraid of where we draw a bunch of really expensive cards, struggle to hit our land drops and our opponent just tempos us out of the game. I mean, the good news is, well, our opponent was on a wild brew, which actually looked pretty cool. I don't know how it stands up to a non-memer dream deck, but it did some interesting things. It had some neat synergies. So definitely a sweet brew from our opponent. Unclear, unclear how it matched up against the actual top tiers of the meta i think we keep this also these budget duels are kind of kind of punishing like we would like to be bushwhacking this oh boy aggro again all right all right all right well bushwhack grab a land i mean we got a tyrannix if we can get to it before we die we did win the die roll which is which is big that gives us some amount of hope i mean we have big things that should just be able to go over the top of mono red should we be able to get them down I think in our dream world, we draw a land in the next two turns and can do the stomper into, all right, there's a Phoenix, and do the stomper into flip invasion thing would be the best. Well, I'll grab a land, up to four mana. I mean, we get to invasion of Zendikar either way. The question is, do we get to try to flip it this turn? Furnace Punisher, well, thankfully we have many basic lands. We have naturally played around, come on land. Play with fire, well, okay, invasion of Zendikar. Forest Mountain. Oh, unfortunately our Stomper's not on, so we're getting smacked here. The opponent, Mishra's Founder. If they have a powerful four drop, we're in serious trouble. We do get to Chandra next turn, which is something. Invasion of Ragatha pings us. Are we trying to flip the battle is the question. Found it, hits us down to eight. We take zero. Well, let's see what we draw. Well, we do draw the land, so we play the land. This lets us attack with Stomper, flip the invasion. Cast the invasion. And then we can play Chandra. Kill both of our opponent's threats. Pass the turn. Okay, that, that was not bad. Doesn't mean our opponent doesn't have eight points of burn in hand, but we can play with Fire the Phoenix if it comes back. So we have, I think we have a shot here. Or maybe our opponent just does have all the burn in hand. Stoke the Flames gets back the Phoenix. We kill the Phoenix. We hit our opponent. Curse of Shaken Faith to the bottom. This is lethal, isn't it? Tyrannus Rex. Hit you to two. And then Chandra for two. Wait, do we just beat Mono Red? Do we just beat Mono Red? <laughs> Tyrannus Rex! <laughs> we just beat Mono Red. I did not think that was possible, but we just beat Mono Red. Uh, bring in all the cheap removal. Bring in Pro Red Sword. Oh, God. Okay, slow stuff. Invasion of Chandelar. Ravenous Sail back. I, I don't think we can cut Tyrannixes. We got to keep all the T-Rexes. That's that's one of the rules of, uh, of this deck. Players can't gain life. Does our deck gain life? I don't think we gain life anyway. I mean, it's probably correct to cut City on Fire, but oh, we definitely can cut Curse of Shaken Faith. It would be pretty funny to, to actually win with Curse... <laughs> 
<laughs> like it can offer a ridiculous amount of damage. If we actually get this down, a lot of our stuff turns into one shot kill threats. We need to cut two more cards and they can't be T-Rexes. Those are the rules. I don't make them, we just play by them. Yeah, I guess we had to cut the city on fire. It's gotta be another expensive card. Right? I guess a Cogla. One Cogla, run it like that. I don't know how this pile just beat Mono Red, but it did. And that wasn't even that wasn't even an Itali game. There was there was no Itali involved. Like Itali, Itali can be anything. So it's not shocking when when we spin into an Itali and it wins the game. But that was not one of those games. Well, racers, ring, go, opponent, taking up the saga. And a land. And a blood feather phoenix. Uh-huh. Well, let's strangle the phoenix, play the mountain, pass the turn. Oh, the opponent gonna flip the saga. We can play with fire the etchings. Monastery swift spear. And lightning strike. Well, in that case, we'll kill the swift spear. No mana to get back the phoenix. Opponent hits us down to 14. Opponent's only got two cards in hand, though. So if we stomp her, we take at least two. But it does ramp. Let's pass. I think we just lightning strike this turn. I guess that means we should have played the Rugged Highlands, but... Lightning strike. Down to 11. This phoenix has been obnoxious. Gets back the phoenix. Goes to combat. We'll kill the phoenix. Drop to nine. Okay, Rugged Highlands, Sheedy Land, actually really good here, that life gain is good. We drew another Lightning Strike, so I think we do the same thing. Wow, opponent's gonna do exactly the same thing. All right, Lightning Strike. Opponent has drawn a lot of Lightning Strikes, almost as many as we have. Actually, maybe more than we have, opponent goes to combat. Well, we will kill the silly Phoenix that will never go away. Well, okay, Strangle the Etchings. Topiary Stomper. I mean, we've put up a fight here. Considering how good this Phoenix has been for our opponent, we have put up a fight. Could definitely get burnt out though. This Phoenix just keeps coming back. Where's our scavenging ooze in standard? I guess it's Graveyard Trespasser, and that's why everyone plays black. <laughs> Bloodthirsty Adversary. Can't flash back though. Down to three. Well, Green Sun's Twilight X5. On the battlefield. Atali, spin it to win it. Invasion of Zendikar. Invasion of Ragatha. Well, I guess we should have done it the opposite way. Hit our opponent for four. Hit the adversary for one. Invasion of Zendikar. Grab a couple lands. Flip. Well, this is it. Either our opponent kills us kills us here or we kill them next turn. We made it within a turn. Opponent plays a land. Is it a burn spell? Oh, I mean, we almost beat Mono Red on the play. Like, if our opponent didn't win there, we get to flip the Itali, and likely, I guess they could jump for one turn and go to nine poison, but considering our opponent's draw and those Phoenixes, we actually made it really close against Mono Red on the play. Like, surprisingly, surprisingly close. We play first. <sighs> All right, this mana base. I mean, I think we gotta keep this hand and hope we hit the red mana because with red mana, this hand's really, really good. The risk is if we never draw red mana, we can't cast our removal while opponents doing some mulliganing. That Phoenix was very impressive. Definitely gained some respect for uh, whatever that is, Blood Feather Phoenix, whatever it's called. We had to spend so many removal spells on it. Opponent, Monastery Swift Spear. And we draw red mana, please. Just a mountain. That's all we need, a mountain. Oh, it's a str Oh, this is like the no red mana nut draw. With red mana, this hand is so good against our opponent's deck. Opponent. Red mana. Okay. Well, I guess maybe there's an argument for mulliganing. Oh, that is the worst invasion of Ragatha. Down to 12. Goose attacking down to 8. Oh, well, I mean, this does get us red mana, but I'm not confident now. It's just too, too late to the party. Um, I'll kill the adversary. I mean, we're already down to 8 before we got to cast our first spell, which is just too slow. With earlier red mana, we would have just been able to keep the threats off the board, but opponent, land. Saga, triggers, pings. And Furnace Punisher. We need even more red mana. Gets in, hits us. Down to five. We go unpunished. More red mana? 
That is more red mana. Okay, so we play the land. We strangle the Furnace Punisher. We play Cinder Maw. Oh, is it too late? That's the question. We draw an Itali, not as good. Is there any two mana creatures in this deck? That's the that's the question. I don't think there are. No, they start at three. Well, so I guess we just play Geoderm. Pass the turn. Opponent flips the Saga. Just to land. Land Itali. Unfortunately, they have to go to hand. No attacks past the turn. What does our opponent find? Our opponent having so many four damage burn spells is scary. Opponent passes. Well, okay. Actually, do we even play this? Oh, I wish we had more lands. Our land problems are coming back to, to bite us here. We need to start doing something or our opponent's eventually just gonna draw the burn spells that kill us. Like, we know that's a thing. Get a topiary stomper. What is our opponent must have drawn Stoke the Flame. Yep. All right, Stoke the Flame. So we are dead to a burn spell. Get the stomper. Grab a land. Pass the turd. Whiff, 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 please. And opponent. Top decks the bird. Well, I will say, we didn't win, but considering the jank level of our deck, we actually put up a pretty good fight against against Mono Red. Like, just looking at our curve, you would assume that Mono Red is just like an auto win for our opponent, but we actually made it close, and we had to keep the risky hand of not having the red mana. That's essentially just a deck building issue though. Like, I think we have to keep risky hands with this deck because the deck's mana base is built with so few lands in so few dual lands that we're just gonna have hands like this. So I don't think we can just mulligan, mulligan into the perfect mana because the deck just isn't built in a way that you're gonna have perfect mana very often. All right, well, I mean, a lot of expensive cards, but we'll give it a go, we'll give it a go. Opponent, Grixis, eh? Well, land, go. Well, let's see if we can resolve some things against Grixis. I really don't understand the giant, Cinder like, ah, four Topiary Stompers would be so perfect for this deck. The giant Cinder Maws uh, is an odd, an odd inclusion. Whoever built the deck spent all their wild cards on seven drops. <laughs> I think they just spent all their wild cards on seven drops, so then we're just like, eh, okay, like whatever, we gotta we gotta deal with the fact that we we can't get more top Yuri stompers <laughs> to let us cast our infinite seven drops bone at Dark Slick Shores. Blood Tithe Harvester. Well, that is better than a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Fable of the Mirror Breaker on the play against this deck, oh god. That is going to do some work. We get to go stomping and get a land. Alright, well, play a land. Play the Stomper. Still haven't drawn a land, unfortunately. Opponent. Opponent might be having land dribbles too. It seems like they're thinking about cracking their blood. Forest achieved. Can you beat two Tyrannic's Atrocities, Opponent? Opponent plays a land. Can't block that. Opponent passes. Well, we will play. Oh, we really need this to resolve. Invasion of Zendikar. All right, it resolves. We don't get to flip it, sadly, but. Two more lands means we might get to cast things in the future. Are they gonna reanimate a tally? Ugh. All right, not an Itali, just a land, that's fine. Sacking the blood to put a land in the graveyard, we can accept that. Opponent hits us down to 14. And brutal, brutal invoke despair. Well, okay, green sun for five. Whoa! God. Not like this. Oh no. Oh no. The stone whiff. Oh, that's so bad for us. That's so bad for us. Yeah, we needed that to go better. Invasion of Crossus. All right, has the make disappear. Well, so I guess we play a Cinder Maw. Oh, we had a chance too. I mean, maybe we should have just played the Cogla, I guess, and went for the guaranteed value. Hitting our land drops is so, is so helpful in this deck though, that green sun for five. So we're going six cards deep. Whiffing's pretty unfortunate, I think. Pwn it, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Things keep getting worse. I mean, I guess we do the same thing. One, two, three, four. All right, X six. We need an actual like good spin off of this for once. Green sun's twilight. Coglin Yadaro, Racer's Ring, both on the battlefield. Fight down the goblin. Oh, all right, yeah, and now we're dead. 
Green Sun's Twilight's pretty hit or miss, isn't it? Surprisingly hit or miss. Wow, Invoke Despairs. Not a card that we really have a good plan for. That's a, uh, that is an issue, isn't it? We just have like no, no real plan to deal with it, which I think is like actually a necessity in current standard because it's so heavily played. I don't think you can, I don't think you can just ignore the fact that it exists. I think you really gotta, you really gotta think through like, okay, how can my deck, how can my deck survive Invoke Despair? What is my plan for Invoke Despair coming down to to a million for one me. All right, well, we will take advantage of our 13 card sideboard to bring in some more early game removal. I mean, I feel like uh, Invoke Despair is brutal. We do have some big whammies though. Like we could go over the top with Tyrannus Rexes or Coglas. This deck's interesting. We might have to do like a, a little rebuild. Although I feel like if we do a rebuild, I'm afraid we just end up with a, a tally deck. Like I think there's a pretty streamlined version of Gruel Ramp that would probably be fairly effective, but I think it would be way less spicy. So the challenge of rebuilding the deck would be can we rebuild the deck in a way that we maintain the the spice level can we still have you know the dinosaur theme and whatnot can we still be tyrannosaurus rex tribal essentially optimize a little bit with like removal having like play with fire be our removal spells a little a little strange i don't know what chandra's doing in a deck with like almost no spells even though i guess chandra just for removal is not horrible like it did win us a game our win against mono red was chandra was partly responsible responsible for it. We will play first. Well, okay, we're probably gonna be casting some mini Green Suns Twilights to try to hit lands. Hopefully they don't whiff. I guess we can also play with fire to scry. So Green Sun would be X2. So we need to land in our top two. Kind of risky with 21 lands, honestly. I guess I could see how this deck could get six wins in a row. I think it mostly would just involve getting very lucky. The deck has a lot of powerful cards and powerful cards can win games of magic. Like Tyran, even the ones that don't normally see play Tyrannosaurus Rex, Zapandrel, Kogla Nyadaro, Vorinclex, Tyrannus Atrocity. Even those cards, like, I mean, they just are big and they got good stats and they have some abilities. Those are cards that can actually just win games of magic. So I could see a world where someone like sat down to play, actually just ran hot by hitting their ramp spells and hitting all their land drops and just like cast big things and it was enough to win. So I could, I could see a world, I think at this point, what are we four matches in? I could see a world where that could happen. I don't think it's uh, gonna do that consistently. Well, okay. We will accept the two mana draw to you. Wow, that was, that was risky, but we got there. Opponent, land. We will play the land. And I think we just pass. We can play with fire the token from Fable. If our opponent plays nothing, then I guess we play with fire our opponent's face. Okay, there's the, there's the Fable. We don't want our opponent ramping into, into Invoke Despair. We just draw a land, that's kind of sweet. So play the land, Green Sun's Twilight for three, try to hit our land for next turn. All right, land Vorinclex, sure, we'll take it. I mean, Green Sun's been good here. After whiffing X5 or X6 last game, <laughs> now we're going X2 and like hitting creature and land every time. Wow, they discard the Invoke Despair, interesting. Well, I mean, we're getting to the point of the game where we're just gonna start casting big dinosaurs every turn and hope for the best. Big dino, well, I guess technically not a dinosaur, but big thing number one, Vorinclex. Do we have a counter? All right, opponent makes it disappear. We still would like to hit our lands. Opponent, Corpse Appraiser. Oh, that makes our Invasion of Chandelar a lot worse, doesn't it? Opponent, grabs, oh, they mill the Fable. I bet they grabbed another counter. Oh, we need this to resolve. So let's Invasion of Zendikar. Please stop countering our stuff. Okay, get a land, get a land. We're getting to the point where we can cast big things, which is nice. Bank Buster gets and hits us. Still wouldn't mind just drawing a land. So we can only do one thing. All right, Invasion of Crossus. At least if they make disappear, they gotta sack something. Opponent. Trying to draw the make disappear. Okay, sacks to draw. All right, well, I guess that went okay. Bushwhack, grab a land. Play the land. 
One of the issues with this deck against counter decks is it's really hard to play more than one spell a turn because our spells are so expensive. All right, Corpse Appraiser to keep drawing cards. Opponent passes. Well, Invasion of Crosses. Sweep away the Corpse Appraiser. Blow up the Bank Buster. Hell, there's Tyrannix Rex. Boy, if we can ever resolve anything. Oh, I'm so afraid of Invoke Despair. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Opponent passes. Rampaging Geodor. I mean, I assume our opponent has removal, but... Okay, there's the go for the throw. Well, okay, discard Kogla. Blow up the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Kogla's ability's been good. I feel like it just gets countered every time. I don't know how we actually resolve anything here. Opponent. She old red. Plays a land. Well, we get drained. Also, these dinos don't line up very well with Shield Red. Well, I guess at this point we don't have a choice. Wow, no counter. Okay, that does change things. Blood Tithe Harvester. Maybe we're too afraid of the counters. Invasion of Ergamon. Discard Atrocity, which just can't get through Shield Red. Get drained. Get a Blood Tithe Harvester. Kills our go for the throw. Yeah, maybe maybe we were too conservative. We should have just slammed it. She, I mean, I guess this is a deck that maybe you just can't play around things and you just gotta, oh, there it is. Yeah, maybe this is a deck that just can't afford to play around things. Maybe maybe it is just like the ultimate Timmy magic where you you just slam your stuff willy nilly into your opponent's interaction and then and then rage when they have a mate disappear. Maybe, maybe you can't try to play around things because like it's so expensive, we're always gonna be casting one thing each turn. So I guess we just have to like cast the best one thing and just just like cross our fingers and pray really hard to the magic gods. Maybe it should have been just more aggressive with, with just hoping for the best. I think normally in magic, you want to try to play around things and not, not run your finishers into counters, but maybe this deck doesn't have the luxury to play around things. Maybe you just got to, maybe you just got to YOLO it. Well, this game, we're going to have all the lands we could ever need, which I guess is good considering if they play a fable here, which I guess is good considering, uh, well, no fable. Considering how expensive our deck is, next turn we get to cast a five drop. Opponent. Wow, runs out Corpse Appraiser. Sure. Oh, it might be, it might be Tyrannix Atrocity's time to shine here. Boom. Smack ya. How do you like a toxic dinosaur to the face, Grixis? Opponent. Kills the Atrocity. Gets in. Now play the land. Vorinclax. Grab a couple forests. Bushwhack the corpse appraiser. All right, pass the turret. Can you kill the Vorinclex? No. Oh, we can't flip it yet though. We can't flip it yet. We need another turn. Pony does get to draw, so they get to try to find a land. They do find the land. We draw a land. Invasion Ergamon. Discard a forest. Play the land, Ravenous Sail back. Give it haste. Flip the Ergabon. Discard a mountain. I think we just take Invasion of Ikoria. Opponents under a lot of pressure here. They gotta kill the Vorinclax. And if they do, we get to resolve a really good Invasion of Ikoria, most likely. Wow, scoops it up. Okay, that was what the deck can do, I guess, when things come together. Like, when things go right, oh, actually kind of a lot of just big dinosaurs smashing in your face. It did require our opponent to uh, stumble and bumble around with lands a little bit, but still, like, that was actually legit impressive. And that was another one. One of the things I was looking for with this deck is like, is it exclusively about a tally high rolling? Like, is that the only way the deck wins? And I mean, a tally is probably like the best card in the deck or one of the best cards in the deck, but it doesn't seem like that's the only way for the deck to win. It seems like the deck actually, actually can win 
without it. The sort of once in future looks so awkward in the sideboard. So we're bringing a little bit more removal. We'll go down City on Fire, sadly. We're having a sail back. Is that, I mean, blowing up an artifact or enchantment actually is kind of relevant, isn't it? Curse of Shaken Faith has got to go. That's the, I think the easiest cut every time is Curse of Shaken Faith. It just doesn't. It just doesn't do, doesn't do anything. The other thing is, I imagine whoever built this deck is playing the swords for protection, which I guess is somewhat legitimate, like sort of. I will say, in general swords, you want cheap creatures to put the swords on. Our curve makes it kind of hard to maximize swords. Like in an ideal world, you want a one or two drop so that you can sword on three and equip on four and get in your first sword hit. Doesn't really, the math doesn't really line up when your curve starts, I mean, <laughs> In earnest at five, we have two, three drops, two, four drops, but really it's five, six, seven drops. So it's a, it seems like a tough build to make the, the actual swords work. This deck is fun. I don't know if it's record wise, it's trending towards meme territory, but there is some, some cool things going on with it. Dino tribal, here we come. Here we come, opponent, tap land. Well, we will play a tap land. Another very expensive hand. Maybe the idea of the invasion of Chandelar is if our opponent counters all of our Oh boy, seven drop. If our opponent counters all of our stuff, we can use it to get it back. It's a little ambitious that the game will still be going, but opponent hits us. Runs out of Corpse Appraiser. Come on, something we can cast. Well, I mean, I think we got to push back for a land. <sighs> okay, now, now we're seeing the slowness. Now we're seeing the slowness thinking. We're like, no meaningful plays until turn four. And we're already down to, already down to 11. Oh God, already down to nine. Oh, we're super. All right, I mean, I guess technically we cast a bushwhack, but in theory, our opponent, like they just played two drop, three drop, four drop, and we can play a rampaging geoderm and die. Yeah, that's that's gonna be an issue. That's gonna be an issue. All of, a lot of this feels fixable. I think after this match, I think we would have played enough to know, to know whether the deck's a meme or dream, and we can do a little evaluation on how we would try to make this archetype into a dream while still maintaining the the spiciness of it. A little, a little deck building exercise here what do you do with a hand like this i feel like this is roughly our expected hand so i don't know how you mulligan it on the other hand i don't know how we realistically win with this hand i mean i guess we strangle something hope to hit lands to get to invasion as endicar i mean i think we mulligan it well this is i honestly think you know what we're gonna put a land to the bottom it's probably it's probably too greedy but we can ergamon into zendikar maybe into a tally we're gonna have to discard something. Well, I guess that something is Tyrannic's Atrocity, unfortunately. Into a Zopandril. Opponent. Oh, Yeah, I think we have to pass. I, With our opponent doing nothing, I don't think we can just run Invasion into it. We really need that to resolve. All right, how uh, about a Geoderm? Wow, actually resolves. All right, well, attack the battle. Get a counter, hit it, wow, okay. Yeah, I was not expecting that. A boon, it plays a land. Obliterating bolt. Hmm. Uh, well, let's, oh, this is tough. Let's invasion of Zendikar. There's the counter. A boon, it. Hit a Sugu and Kiri, yikes. Uh, well, okay. I guess this means we run out of Orinclax. Grab a couple forests. I mean, it is who uh, invoke despair. And opponent plays a land and passes. Well, we will play a Ren and Realm Breaker. Take it down. I mean, I guess we take a tally. Uh, our opponent's definitely gonna, look at our hand. Our hand is busted, but we'll, I mean, we're gonna cast, oh jeez. Uh, I will be happy when Invoke Despair rotates. Obnoxious opponent gets and hits us. Well, we talked about it last time. We decided you cannot play this deck with fear, so we cast an Atali. Opponent, well, it resolves, okay. Let's see what it hits. We need big hits. Oh God. <sighs> Hardcore whiffage. From our opponent's deck, we get a counter spell, which is the straight up whiff. Not an Invoke Despair, not a Obliterating Bolt, not a Hit a Sugu and Carry or a Shield Rid. It's in Hansus. Blood Tithe Harvester. Are we slow rolling here, opponent? Of course. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess you gotta, you gotta run out that Blood Tithe Harvester, not the Lethal Invoke Despair. What do we learn about this deck? I mean, I think it is pretty safe to declare it a meme. So we ended up only winning one match with the deck, although we did it with some other games along the way, and it did feel close at times, but really, our concerns from the deck tech about the curve of the deck just being so incredibly high and the deck lacking lands that really did kind of play out the way that we feared it would, where yes, when things come together, the deck can play some really big, powerful things and win games. On the other hand, uh, there's a lot of consistency issues because I actually math this out in the average mana value of a non-land card in our deck is four. It's four, which is, I mean, commander decks don't have an average mana value of four a lot of times. Like it is off the charts high, especially considering that we just aren't playing that many lands in the deck. So I think that that is the issue. Remember those games where we had some games where we were like, do nothing, turn one, do nothing, turn two, do nothing, turn three, play something, turn four. When you actually math out the mana values of the deck, those games are kind of the norm. Like that's gonna happen fairly often with our average mana value being so high. So our challenge is considering the current build of the deck is a meme. And I should say, I don't doubt that the deck could get six wins in a row. There are powerful cards in this deck. And if you just run really well, avoid the mana screw, draw your good cards, hit your few ramp spells, the deck could just high roll into six wins in a row. So I'm not doubting that it got six wins, but I would say going six to know with this deck is like the 99th percentile outcome. Like if you played, let's say 106 game sets with this deck, I would guess maybe you'd go 6-0 and a single time. And a lot of times, it's gonna be more like what we saw today, where you're going like uh, one in five, maybe two in four, maybe oh in six at some points. I think that's kind of like typical for the deck. And the 6-0 is like, I got really, really lucky and just like had everything go perfectly for six matches in a row. So I think it is clearly a meme, although it is a meme that if you run really hot can win games. So the question for us is how do we make this deck into a better version of itself while still keeping uh, its charm. We still wanna be dinosaur tribal essentially. So we don't wanna just be like, oh, we're gonna cut all the Tyrannosaurus Rexes. We're gonna cut all the Tyrannus uh, Atroxities and replace them with Moritales or whatever. Like we don't wanna do that. We wanna keep the theme of the deck. So here's what I would do. I think our challenges are threefold. Number one, make the deck have more lands. Like we need to up our land count to at least 24. Number two, lower the curve of the deck. A curve of an average mana value of four is just straight up not gonna work in standard. And then number three, try to make the deck a bit more consistent. So step one, cut the cards that just don't make sense. Like Curse of Shaken Faith doesn't make sense. Ren and Realm Breaker doesn't really make sense. Uh, Chandra Hope's Beacon, we gotta cut expensive stuff. There's no doubt about it. We wanna try to avoid cutting dinosaurs. So I think we cut like Chandra does doesn't do a ton in the deck. City on Fire, it's funny, but it's probably not, you know, really ever gonna come into play and do what we want it to do. Zapandril, I think, powerful card, but it's not a dinosaur. And we got enough top end dinosaurs that I think we cut that. I think we can cut a Coglin Yadaro. Uh, Ravenous Sailback, honestly, I don't think we can play in the main deck. I don't wanna cut it because it's a dinosaur and we're trying to keep the dinosaur tribal theme, but I think maybe we just move it to the sideboard is an artifact hate spell. So I think maybe that's how we handle that and then I think we have to like maybe trim an invasion of Chandelar wasn't very impressive maybe go down to two Tyrannus atrocities the invasion of Crossus I think that can probably go in the sideboard at least one of those as well and then I think the removal we gotta we gotta switch this up play with fire is not gonna get it done in a deck with battles I would say Nahiri's Warcrafting is our go-to it's still not fast against aggro which could be a concern but it's so good by giving us a way to flip battles uh, okay so we got rid of the cards we obviously want to cut. How do we up the consistency of the deck? And I think the easiest way is just to flesh out a ramp package. Like Topiary Stomper into Invasion of Zendikar into Big Dinos. That's the best thing our deck can do. The problem is we only have one copy of Topiary Stomper and only three Invasion of Zendikars. So I think that making those uh, max out four copies of each is an easy way to increase our odds of consistently casting our big Tyrannosaurus Rexes and Tyrannus atrocities and so forth. So I think that's step one. We also need to just add more lands to the deck. I think this is a budget mana base 
So I'm not going to take and just like cut all the budget lands. Honestly, there were a couple of times the tap lands were annoying, but I don't think they're like straight up a deal breaker, but I do think we need to have at least 24 lands. So we add more lands to the deck. So we're already starting to look a little bit better. We filled out our sideboard, which we'll talk about the sideboard in a minute, but we got more cards in our sideboard. Our deck is looking a little bit lower curved, a little bit more consistent with the ramp package. Now, how do we just finish this off? I say my concern right now is still that our curve is pretty high if you look at this. Like, it's dropped a little bit, but I actually mathed it out again with adding more lands and trimming back, and our curve is like still 3.8 or something, like, which is just way, way too high. So I think the final step, and this is gonna be a little bit painful, but I think we have to cut a little bit more top end. Like, maybe we can't play the Coglin Yadaro. The card's really cool, but it's not a dinosaur for trying to be dinosaur themed. So maybe we cut back on that. Uh, maybe we trim back on a Bushwhack, which is fine, but kind of fillery. I think Giant Cinder Maw, now that we have four top Eerie Stompers, we don't need the worst dino. And then the card I think we add, and I feel dirty about this, but if you're playing a non super aggro red deck in standard, Fable the Mirror Breaker fixes pretty much all of our problems like it ramps us which is what we want if we don't have enough lands it can discard expensive stuff to find lands if we do have enough lands we can discard lands to find expensive stuff it takes multiple removal spells which gets removal out of our opponent's hand so maybe our dinosaurs actually live so as much as it's just like a straight up standard staple and it feels like a little bit dirty to actually add it to the deck it really is the perfect card for our deck and just about any deck in its colors and then i guess we just max out invasion of ergamon and that leaves us with something that looks kind of like this in this i'm not saying this deck is broken it's still dinosaur tribal it's still got kind of a janky theme going on but to me this looks like kind of a functional standard deck we got 24 lands we got a bit of removal our curve is still probably too high honestly like we could definitely use more two drops that's something we just really don't have many of maybe there's a way we can get some uh azusa's many journeys into the deck although i'm getting to the point where i'm not sure what we're gonna cut to make room for that but i think this is functional enough the other thing that i think we would change is just the sideboard like the sideboard the strangles are good the rest of it doesn't make sense to me. Foreboding Statue is the kind of card that if you want a ramp effect, you really want it in your main deck. Ramp isn't something that's only good in some matchups. So either you want it or you don't. Uh, I would say the swords don't really make a lot of sense with our high curve. Swords really need cheap creatures to wear the sword, and we just don't have that. So I think I would cut those cards. Cityscape Leveler is fine. We can keep Sail back being our uh, our card, our dinosaur to bring in to blow up an artifact and enchantment. It's not good, but it's thematic. So I would cut those cards from the sideboard. And then if you look at a standard metagame, you're really looking for sideboard cards that are good in two places. One is against aggro decks. The other is grindy mid-range slash control decks. Those are of the two big ones i would say and this is another card that if we could find room in the main deck and i don't think we can without cutting battles and dinosaurs which we really don't want to do for theme purposes but i think reckoner bank buster would be a really good main deck card worst case it is one of the best sideboard cards to bring in in grindy matchups like if we're going to run into grixis and they're going to try to grind us out or some sort of control deck that's going to try to grind us out the extra cards that bank buster offers really really help so i think we add in bank buster Busters to help against uh, those matchups, the grindy matchups. And then I think we go for like Brotherhood ends and maybe and maybe uh, a burn down the house is a sweeper to bring in against aggro. So if we run into aggro, our plan is bring in strangles, maybe lightning strikes, bring in sweepers, kill all of our opponent's stuff, play big dinosaurs, win the game. If we run into the grindy decks, our plan is bring in Reckoner or bank busters. We maybe could still bring in the burn down the house uh, and give our deck a chance to actually go toe to toe and the card advantage level with those decks. So I think this is how I would play the deck, obviously, the most optimal build is probably cutting a bunch of janky dinosaurs and cutting some of the janky battles and just being like a generic rule ramp deck where you're ramping into a tally all the time or something. But that's not nearly as fun. So we don't want to like ruin the theme of the deck. But I think this is how I would try to unmemify dinos in battles a little bit while still keeping to the dino tribal theme. So anyway. That's Memer Dream. That's been our deck for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you got any other ideas about how to make the deck work, definitely let me know, because the idea is pretty funny. We did see the deck do some cool things. It just wasn't quite functional enough. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.